Welcome. If our charges are no longer point charges at a single point, but now distributed into shapes like lines, one-dimensional arcs, or then 2D or 3D shapes, we start to see that we might need to start doing something to go from the field that we know, the field of a point charge, into the field of these shapes. So first off would be a bad approximation. A bad approximation of the field from this shape would be just condensing it all into a single charge and then seeing what the field would be. I feel that we all feel this is a pretty bad approximation, so let's look at a better approximation. We could split this into five separate pieces, looking at this, each of these five pieces would then have one-fifth the charge, Q over five, and we could certainly see some issues with this, but we can see also that, right, these five charges are certainly better than this one charge. So we could get a good approximation And if you're using computers, you could do this by just right having, say, 25 or so, where each of these would be Q over 25. And if we had 25 or so of those, then this would be a pretty good approximation, right? Once we get around 20 or so and anything larger than that um, for one-dimensional shapes, it becomes kind of just we don't, we're, we're good. But what we really want, right, is we want the truth, and we, we would need how many pieces if we start thinking calculusly. And the calculusly answer is we need an infinite number of pieces. And this infinite number of pieces would each have right individual little slices, where each individual little slice would be Q over an infinite amount. So we're going to call this right DQ. DQ represents a very, very small bit of charge for this. And so we'd say then the Q would be the sum of all these individual QIs, or really would be the integral of all of the individual DQs. So then we'd have, right, this slice would have charge DQ, this slice would have charge DQ, and so on and so forth. So when we talk about this then, we don't just talk about, right, the charge of the whole piece. We talk about how densely the charge is distributed. So we talk about charge densities. So we might have seen densities back in fluids. This might be something new for us. So we're going to introduce some Greek characters for this. This is lambda. This is the linear charge density, which means, right, the change in charge over the change in length which, if we're starting to use calculus, would be dq over dl. Then for our book versus other books, a lot of other books use sigma for a surface charge. Our book uses eta for a surface charge. This is the amount of charge over the amount of area, or then dq over da. And a density that you might have seen is rho, this kind of saucy p, even though it represents an r is the change in Q over the change in V, the volumetric charge density. Since we live in a three-dimensional world, if you just hear charge density, they're probably saying volumetric charge density, or it's the charge density of whatever dimensionality your charge distribution has, which would then be dQ over dV. So how we solve these is if we had a differential electric field of a piece, this would still be the 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught or Q, or K, but instead of Q, it would be DQ, and instead of R, well, it still stays R, and R hat stays the same. And then depending on our piece, so if we had it be 1D, we can solve for DQ, DQ, right, would then be lambda DL. If we're 2D, dq is going to be eta dA. If we're 3D, 
dq is going to be rho db. And then for our right 1d cases, we'll go into other cases a little bit later, right? The dl for a straight piece is just equal to dx or dy or whichever direction that we're going in. And then the dl for an arc is going to be the radius times d theta. This is coming from the arc length equation s equals r theta, although we can talk about it a little bit differently. 